There are more than 400,000 NCAA student athletes. NCAA on campus is their story. This edition of NCAA on campus takes us to the home of the Golden Bears. The University of California Berkeley sits just east of San Francisco and is rated consistently as one of the world's finest universities. Their golf team had a great season, finishing among the final four for the second consecutive year, winning an NCAA record 12 victories in 14 matches and ranked number one for almost the entire season. The Bears team also had the NCAA Player of the Year and sent one golfer to the Masters and three to the U.S. Open. The NCAA season ended with a major disappointment, falling to Illinois in the national semifinals. But it was still a remarkable year. Steve Desimone has been the Cal coach for 34 years and this year earned his second National Coach of the Year award. I think that, you know, you've got to start with players. And you have to start with guys that can commit themselves to a team and they want to work hard. They want to be good students and they want to be a part of a great program. I've had lots of great teams, lots of really good teams that have bonded in many ways. Uh, but I will tell you, I think this is the most special team we've had. And I don't mean just in terms of how successful we've been on the golf course. It's been academic. It's been in terms of citizenship. These guys are like brothers. Yes, they all want to play number one, make no mistake about that. But they root for each other, there are no egos here. They are a unique group, Mr. Augusta, the big hitter, the little guy, the comic, and the captain. Michael Weaver, Brandon Hagee, Michael Kim, Joel Stalter, Max Homa. Max, the team's only senior, went out and won the NCAA individual title. My role on the team is just to make sure everybody is working hard, uh, keeping a good positive mindset, and um, just that they know that how the golf course is going to set up. Max is really the spiritual leader of this team. He's the tough guy. When we have team meetings, we end every one with something from Max. You know, he has a really good work ethic that I try to follow, and uh, he's been a great leader for us. Joel Stalter is from France on the French national team and came to Cal on an international exchange program. He could have been sent anywhere around the world. By chance, he was sent here. The family that he lived with for a month, they had Cal roots. They brought Joel over to campus, and uh, he loved this place. I think Joel adds an important element to our team in terms of just the gritty European style that he, that he brings um, every tournament. His role on the team is probably the the class clown, I guess. He's always keeping everybody loose and joking around. You know, everybody's working hard and there's a time where we can have fun and there's a time where we all work hard together. So it's really cool, we're like a family. Michael Weaver spent a week this April in Augusta, Georgia, the first cow golfer to play in a little tournament they call the Masters. Michael, yeah, the dream. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've, you know, we've a great guy, smart guy, and, uh, you know, he obviously did very well. I got to play with some of the best players in the world. It was something I'll, you know, remember forever. It was a great experience playing on a major championship and on a really tough golf course like that. He told us some pretty great stories, getting to practice next to Tiger, playing a practice round with Rory McIlroy. It, it's very inspiring, I think, for everybody. It was really fun to watch him on TV, um, and I think it just kind of showed that, you know, we can get to that level as well. Brandon Hagee, tremendous player. Brandon is one of the best players in the country, always been one of the longest, if not the longest hitter in college golf. It's become his trademark, I guess. And you know, a lot of people we play with, they'll ask me, you know, how far does Hagee hit it? I think I get that question once a tournament at least. So I think a lot of people don't understand how good he is in other areas of the game, just because he's so renowned for his driving. It's kind of a, a pain to play with him because every time I tee up, tee up after him, I feel like I'm really weak. I really like, you know, when I go back home and people think I hit it far, I just look at them like, you don't understand. My, my roommate hit it 50 yards past me. I think a lot of it is just kind of what you're born with. Um, and then I think some of it too is a combination of playing other sports when I was younger um, and then just being flexible um, and just kind of creating angles that create speed. The final member of this fantastic five is sophomore Michael Kim. This season, he was the NCAA's number one ranked golfer, and in July at the U.S. Open, finished as the low amateur, tied for 17th overall. He came to Cal with a big question about his game. The knock on Michael was that he didn't hit it real long, which is true. 
At the time, he didn't, but he had a great short game, and he had you know, one of the best putters we've ever seen. He works extremely hard. Uh, he's added almost 25 pounds since he came in here a year ago, partly due to our strength and conditioning program. He was 15, 20, maybe 30 yards short of players a year ago. He's out there with him with his driver. He's picked up at least one club with his irons, and uh, he's become much more of a complete player. We didn't expect a whole lot of him because he's kind of a smaller guy, or didn't hit it very far, and we weren't really sure how he would compete in college, and he's, uh, he's proven that you know, the length isn't everything it's cracked up to be. I think that's the beauty of golf is it doesn't matter how big, small, tall, short you are, you, know, you, you can be the best player in the country. And I think a lot of it has to do with his work ethic. You know, he's relentlessly practicing all the time and just kind of sticking to what, what he does best. He's legendary within the team. There's nothing that bothers him, whether he makes eagle, birdie, par, double, whatever. He is as even-tempered as you can imagine. I call him the robot. He doesn't do anything wrong ever. Um, and even when he, when he does, he makes it up immediately. I definitely try to make sure not one shot affects me too much. You know, try to keep even keel out there. These guys are excelling in NCAA competition while studying at one of the nation's toughest academic institutions. It does scare away some players who are only interested in golf and really in four years of golf and wanting to get out. Um, I think it's a shame. I think that they don't give themselves credit for being able to do two things at once. And, uh, and we let, in the recruiting process, we let our recruits know and we let the families know that we have expectations. We have academic expectations. We have golf expectations. We have citizenship expectations. I think one of the uh, most impressive things of this season is the fact that we have three players in our starting five in the Haas School of Business, which is one of the best business schools in the country. And golf's a mental game and you have to make smart decisions out there. And I think, you know, challenging yourself in the classroom, it, you know, it keeps your mind sharp and um, I think that's, that's definitely a factor on the course. Cal loses only one player from a team that has been in the Final Four the past two seasons. And for the rest of college golf, that means they could be the bad news bears. I really see us being as strong next year, maybe even better than where we are this year. Congratulations on a great season, Bears, and thanks to everyone at the University of California, Berkeley. Before we end this edition of NCAA On Campus, we'd like to pay tribute to Jim Wright, the NCAA's Director of Media Coordination and Statistics, who retired a couple of weeks ago. After, well, we'll let the head statistician tell you. I actually started July 7th of 75. So if I, I could have just stayed a couple more days, I would have had the perfect end to an exact 38 years. Instead it's going to be 37 years, 11 months, 3 weeks, and 5 days. Not that I'm counting. The first couple of years that I, I was at the NCAA, the technology was not what it is today. And it, it's hard to even imagine this, that calculators had barely started. There were no computer programs. Much of the calculations that we did were manual calculations. We still had uh, ditto masters. We still mailed our statistics to everybody. So you think about the fact that 35, 38 years ago, it would take maybe a week after the event before the schools or the media would see the national stats. Well, today, if it's 10 o'clock the next morning and the stats aren't available, people are screaming, where are the stats? I, I think one thing that, that uh, I especially like about what our statistics staff has done is if you were new to the structure of the NCAA, you didn't realize there was a division one, two, and three, but you went to our site to look at the NCAA statistics, you wouldn't be able to tell from looking at the statistics whether you were looking at a Division I set of stats or a Division III set of stats, or whether you're looking at men's basketball or women's field hockey. And we've done that deliberately over the years. We wanted to make sure every sport, every division was treated with the same uh, importance. In the future as a retiree, my belief is that it's kind of like an extended vacation. And so I want to be a bum for maybe the first couple of months. Then eventually I, I want to do a little freelance writing. My, my major was in journalism at Ball State, so I want to take advantage of that. My main focus is to be as much of a bum as I can, watch a little bit of Cincinnati Reds baseball, go to Ball State a little more often, and, and just kind of hang out. 
Well, Jim, have a great time hanging out. And thank you for what you did for the NCAA and for all college sports fans. For 37 years, 11 months, three weeks, and five days, you can look it up. And that's it for this edition of NCAA On Campus. Thanks for watching.